Yes, um, um, we are bringing up um, Robbie Rimsky. Hey, I just saw you've got the same last name as Bomb the Suburbs. The same last name as who? As uh, the guy who wrote Bomb the Suburbs. Never read that. No, you didn't read that? I don't know. What is that, Katie? Okay, never mind. Bob in the suburbs? No, Baum. B O M. Oh, Baum the B. Baum the suburbs. Oh. Uh, William Wimsett. Sorry, wrong name. <sighs> Robbie Rimsky, excuse me for uh, making a completely erroneous uh, parallel there. We'll start over. And is Kim going to join us? No? Okay. She's the photographer for this uh, outing they're having. <laughs> Give me that book, Michael. I got the book. I got it in my hand. It's really actually a pretty nice looking book, I got to say. It's got a great cover. And if I had better glasses, I have none. It says, uh, Walton Street Publishing presents a mild form of madness. And who did this cover? Um, that cover was, uh, that was done by uh, my friend, uh, Ryan Carey. Uh, we kind of got that done over a few uh, a few sessions of his altered consciousness. Yeah, you know, a little bit. Uh, he's he's a really good artist. Uh, yeah, it's he's actually done a few things here, uh, I believe. And um, basically, he rolled by a few times, uh, had a lot of coffee, played some chess, and uh, I was able to kind of dictate whatever I wanted. And he just made it happen. You know? So the uh, the cover is actually uh, indicative of what's in the book, and we have. Uh, uh, a hand from the clouds coming down, ripping out a tree. We have uh, stone walls, cities, lots of people. Looks like the city, people are leaving the city. A couple are going back in. Yeah, you know, it's just pretty, you know, what, what you see every day out in the streets in Chicago, you know, there's... The comings and goings. The comings and goings, yeah, exactly. There's never really... Uh, anything that's going to trump reality, as you all know, just out there every day seeing all sorts of wild, interesting people. Well, now that we've talked about how the book looks and it's <laughs> a beautiful, thick feel and nice printing, it's really, it's, it's, some books look terrible. This one looks great. Cool. And, um, I got to notice, I got to point out, though, that the print is small. This is going to be a longer book to uh, read than, than it looks. Well, that's good. It give you something to look forward to every night or day. What's up with that, Robbie? Um... Well, it takes place uh, kind of like live action over three days uh, all over the city. Um, there's a lot of secondary uh, characters in there. But it basically focuses on uh, kind of a tale of a blue-collar family in Chicago. Um, over time, kind of runs through a lot of the bad breaks like this uh, fictitious family has uh, had to deal with um, over time. And... Uh, Robbie, you were born and raised in Ukrainian Village? Uh, I was born um, in Chicago. Um, my family's from Ukrainian Village and then eventually uh, lived in Arlington Heights as well. Uh -huh. And uh, so my so family's kind of spread throughout the city. So the reason I interrupted you is, it, it, is this comes from your own, perf your own personal experience? Some, some of it. Um, I mean, I guess... Everything that uh, anyone writes comes from personal perspective in some degree, you know. Cool, cool enough. <laughs> but uh, I definitely would say that it's representative of Chicago, um, of a lot of the families out there trying to make it in the current situation who don't really have the options that they once had back in the day um, in terms of a lot of those jobs just not being here anymore. And, you know, it's not as easy as it once was. Not that it was ever easy, but I feel like you see it every day. You know, families outside the village discount trying to pack up as much as they can and save a little money for food. You know, it's not easy. And it's a rough city. Is, th is there a... Um, is there a... Uh in the plot line, you're saying it's the it's the story of a working class family trying to make it in the city. Do you also have like a romantic plot line? Or, yeah, there's or a little bit of romance in there. You know, um, another uh, major theme is violence against women in the book. Um, there's a there's a character Melissa uh, who's kind of representative of. Uh, you know, just a lot of what's good in the world, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, all the beautiful things that I would say are a little naive in people. She's a bit of an optimist, um, trying to trying to do the best she can to to stay that way, uh, and then 
She is based on a character of an individual that I once knew who uh, was actually killed. Um, and so, I guess... Uh, Robbie, I think uh, you are one of the guests that works uh, that work, is going to work well on video. Yeah. Unlike myself, <laughs> when I see the video of these radio shows. If you're listening to this show, Robbie's uh, he's looking really slick. He's got his little brim on. He's got. It's brim. a herringbone brim. It, and he's, and got, he's got, got some dark shades and that beautiful blonde hair coming out <laughs> from under the hat and over the sunglasses. And he's, yeah. and he's drinking coffee out of the top of a thermos. Yeah, definitely. Which no one owns anymore. Those kind of thermoses. They're good. And he's They're got good. a striped Oxford shirt. Yeah, striped Oxford shirt. You know. This guy's good. Yeah. So what I'd like to know is uh, what inspired you to write this book and tell us a little bit about your early roots of uh, that led you to become a writer. What were you doing when you decided to write the book? Uh, do you, uh, do you was, write full time? Do you write in the morning? Spill some beans. I, fight, I, I write pretty much as much as possible. Um, I guess I was just quitting like job after job, you know, trying to get into the corporate <laughs> world and uh, walking out after That's like... That's a luxury these Three days, weeks. Yeah, jobs. Know, right? You know? Nobody quits a job anymore. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it was kind of like that. And, um, you know, I just grew up in a family that was real tight. And uh, everyone always had a lot of stories. My dad's a metal worker. Um, and being them being from the Ukrainian village for, you know, four generations, everyone had a lot of stories. Uh, another one of my uncles was the head sketches for the Chicago PD back in the 80s. So, you know, it was pretty much me going to the lake house, uh, sitting silent for like two days, listening to my uncles tell stories. You know, so that kind of got me into writing, just listening to their stories from their kind of hard knock lives, you know. And uh, that's cool. so I just tried to kind of use some of that and... Uh, you know, just give people a feel for Chicago who might not be from Chicago. You know, I feel like we, we kind of all take it for granted. Uh, the beautiful yet terrible yet uh, numerous things that make you unable to leave this city once you're from here. You know, when you're on vacation, it's like, you know, I'm on vacation, but deep down inside, you're always a Chicagoan, you know. You know, it always reminds <laughs> me of Nelson Algren in uh, Chicago City on the Make. He says, somewhere between such and such street and North Troy Street, Chicago divided my heart, making me love the joint forever, but knowing she'd never love me. That's so it is a low-down, dirty city, and it's also like, uh, it's, it's a paradise. It is. Actually one so of the we revel in that contradiction. Yeah, I mean, just just the beauty that you see every day when you walk up and down the streets. You know, you could just take for granted, dip over to the lake, take a ride. You know, I mean, there's no place like it. I like I like where you're coming from. When Michael asked you about your writing habits, um, I'm not sure if you actually answered that, but. Um, <laughs> Do you have a habit, or, um, are, or are you a little more manic? Um, I would say that... Or is it a mild form of madness? Yeah, I guess it would be. I would <laughs> say that I pretty much try and get out there and walk uh, or ride my bike or, and just have pen and paper. Um, I'm a photographer originally, first and foremost, and so, um, you know, being out there, my style isn't really to sit behind a desk and... Uh, you know, trying to imagine a bunch of things. I'd rather just be out seeing it, you know, and uh, trying to capture it as accurately as possible. Well, as somebody, I, I got to say it's true of both Katie and I who uh, have books in the works and plans to write books and people tell us to write books. Uh, I'm always uh, inspired by people who actually put one out. And uh, this is, a, as I said earlier, a really a nice looking book and it, uh, it is put out by a local press. And I'd like it, like it if you could tell us a little bit about how you came to publish it. I mean, how did you find the press? Who is the press? What else do they put out? And uh, how are you promoting it? Are you doing book readings? How they're sales, where's it going, etc. The okay. business of it. Um, yeah. Uh, Walton Street Publishing was actually my uh, press originally. It was uh, started as like a photography house back in 09. And uh, the focus of the photography is like half uh, street and half uh, nature. And then so we try and donate um, portions of those sales to, um, you know, uh, literacy programs for like the street photography that we sell and, um, you know, things that uh, go for environmental factors for the environmental photos that we sell. And um, so it's in bookstores, like only independent bookstores it's being sold in, um, both throughout Chicago and throughout the United States. 
And um, so, what does that mean? It's in about five places. <laughs> I mean, there aren't that many it, independent bookstores re- left. You could do it on consignment here. It's the truth. Oh, <laughs> it's considered done. That'd be an honor. Um, yeah, it's uh, that is true. You know, there aren't that many independent bookstores left, but the ones that are there, we're trying to get in there uh, on a grassroots level and get it out there. Um, so you're in Barbara's, for example. Uh, Barbara's is the only one that we're not in. Really? So, yeah, hey, anyone you gotta break out down that door. Because the they going have on? like three or four stores. Not then plus, it would be at the airport. Plus they have a, <laughs> they have a store at the airport. They might they may have uh, actually gone away from the small independent bookstore label. Yeah, they said by that virtue they were, uh, of being at the airport. Well, Barbara sold it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a long time ago. Okay. Oh, that, okay. Well, then that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So you are self-published, and which a lot of we've had a I, I had another woman uh, recently hand me her book that is self-published. A, another Chicago-based. It's all actually Chicago stories, and it's called the '60s, and she self-published. And um, besides the obvious difficulty in getting distribution. Um, what are the um, what are the pluses and minuses of being in that spot as an author? Well, I think the biggest plus is just to have um, you know the creative responsibility on your own shoulders and not really having things toned down, if you will. Um, I don't really think this book would have been published as is if uh, I went to a regular publishing house um, in terms of some of the rawness of it. Um, and so it's nice not to have to worry about that. And I think a lot of things today are watered down, you know. <laughs> not this show not being one of them, which is excellent. <laughs> we have restrictions. <laughs> right. There's certain language we can't use. Right. But, but, you know, in general, you know, I just feel like a lot of things um, become watered down just to fit into some sort of a idealistic role that might not really be representative of real life itself. You know what I mean? Um, and cool. so not having to worry about that was the best part about it. All right. That and... Um, I think just being able to build relationships with bookstores one-on-one and, um, you know, just try and build something from the ground up so that we could eventually bring in other authors, other artists um, of a similar mindset who uh, want to get their talent out there and not necessarily have uh, their work be watered down or have uh, their eventual payments be uh, taken by a large uh, conglomeration publishing company. Robbie, um, this, have you, had you published anything before, any articles or anything? Business writing, yeah, some Business stuff at the London Times. But this like is that. your this first uh, first book, and it's as a as the owner of a of a publishing house. Now it's also your first book you've published. That's true. And yeah. you have a, pe- a group of people banging at the doors to get published. Um, Do you have capital to make it happen? How's it going? We're trying to build the capital to make that happen, definitely. And um, you know, we've had a pretty good reception on this piece so far, and so as that continues to grow. Um, my hope is that we'll have the capital to, uh, you know, get other other work out there from other artists and you know treat them well when the time comes. So, have you yet been around long enough to participate in, say, the um, Printers Row stuff that goes on here? Uh, yeah, we were in Printers Row this year, which cool. was uh, really cool. Um, my dad used to work in a machine shop on Printers Row, uh-huh. and so it was kind of cool to. Be Return there, full to the cir- cir- circle, yeah. Full circle is right. Wow. And uh, the people there were really nice to us, and uh, you know we did get a lot of books out there, and so it was just uh, really cool, yeah. If I ever get free on a weekend again in my life, which you know having a restaurant, <laughs> I have. Don't been, count on it. <laughs> really, um, I'd love to go to the Printers Row thing. I mean, I, I was, I did make the. Uh, Newberry Library uh, event uh, a couple of years back. Are you part of that as well? Uh, no. That's that's um, that's deep. That's a deep, uh, and it's more political, I think, um, based on the folks who uh, opened up the space at Newberry to the uh, to the Newberry bookstore. But anyway, Robbie Rimsky, um, author of A Mile Form of Madness, owner of Walton Street Publishing. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, is there anything we haven't asked you that you would like to share? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I'd like to share that, uh, you know, if you, anyone out there, I know, you know, reading, it's, it's definitely moved more digital, you know, and that's something that we're going to try and, try and catch up with, like, toward late fall, but, um, I guess, 
More than anything, I would say that, um, you know, if you're looking for a book that's just going to remind you of the fact that life is short and you got to do what you really love if you don't want to shoot yourself in the very end. We like this, this guy. This <laughs> that's good. You know, I'm going to read this book. <laughs> it's a true man. You guys a copy, are doing I'm going to read it. Yes. Um, well, Walton Street Publishing, um, Kim, Robbie, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks a lot for having us out. We've uh, loved coming to this place for a long time, and it's a, a real honor to be here today. Well, it's a treat to have you. A Mild Form of Madness is the book. I suspect you'll be able to find a few copies in the Heartland General Store after today, but also at your favorite um, locally owned small business bookstore. Um, and you can ask them if they don't have it, why don't they have it? A Mild Form of Madness by Robbie Rimsky. Thanks a lot, guys. It's Thank a pleasure If being you want here. a little more information, uh, inquisitions at waltonstreetpublishing.com. Yeah, at Walton Street Publishing. Publishing.com is where it's at. Okay. All right. Yay. Big Thank round you. of applause here. Let's, let's hear it for Robbie. Robbie Wormsky. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. Do we want a musical break? It is live from the heartland on WLUW uh, 88.7 FM.